In last year's IGF in Kyoto, Japan, I met one of the experts in IGF, and he told me, "Internet governance, what a complex topic, and we're not quite sure whether IGF is relevant to the wizards moving forward." And this is why I decided to devote my speech on, first of all, making sure, on a multilateral perspective, in a multi-stakeholder fashion, we appreciate the importance of governance and how it, I would argue it is one of the most fundamental levers to innovate together for shaping a better tomorrow. The world is talking today about internet governance. Digital governance, AI governance, cyber governance. So, what is governance? In very simple terms, governance goes back to the first industrial revolution, the steam engine, out of which there was a component called the governor, which basically controls power and creates balance for steam to make sure that we can benefit humanity for the greater good. But that definition is 563 years off because it's actually the heart. Of the Arab and the Muslim world during the Islamic and Arabic golden age, in which we introduced to the world gears in a system called the sapia, which is an irrigation system by Al Jazeera, which basically controlled the flow of water for once again power and distribution of resources for the greater benefit of humanity. So why is it very critical? We are today. Talking about digital divide, but before we talk about that, we must zoom out and talk about the global divide, and then zoom in on the way forward. Talking about AI divide and the need for a new AI governance model. So let's talk about the global divide. Globally, we have 8.2 billion population. If you look at the north and the south, 1.3 billion up north. And 6.9 billion in the south. But if we look at the distribution of wealth, and let's use global GDP as a proxy, there's roughly 110 trillion dollars worth of GDP output in the world. How are we doing? 45 trillion for the global north, and 65 trillion for the global. That does not seem too bad. But where's the disparity? And the divide is that when you look for per capita, it translates into 35,000 per capita up in the north and 10,000 in the south. So for every dollar being made in the global south, in the north, somebody makes 3.5 dollars. That doesn't sound right, and it's not a surprise that as a result of that, it's going to take us 134 years to close down the digital divide. In gender and the global gender divide, and it's not a surprise that the global gender divide is costing humanity seven trillion dollars. And talking about another seven trillion dollars, global trade barriers today are costing us as much, and the cost of inaction in climate change is six trillion dollars. Mind you, that's the size of five to six G20 nations. Let's talk about. The digital world. Are we doing any better? In the north, we have 1.1 billion people connected, 91 percent. Great job. In the south, we have 2.5 billion people left behind, with only 4.4 billion connected. And when we're talking about 15 percent of the global economy, happens to be the digital economy, 16 and a half trillion dollars. How does that fare in terms of per capita execution? Once again. In the global south, south it's 1.4 thousand dollars, and in the global north, it's 5 thousand. Yet again, for every single dollar in the south, 3.5 dollars in the north. That doesn't seem right, and it's not a surprise that the cost of this divide in the digital world means a third of the world being left behind. We still have five million shortage when it comes to the talent in cybersecurity. We have the governor of Sadaa here. We have a three million shortage in data and AI specialists, and we have still a long way to go in terms of the gender digital divide. And this is why, in collaboration with you, the ITU, UNDISA, the Digital Cooperation Organization, and in Saudi Arabia, leading by example, we have launched initiatives 
like connecting from the skies. And I see the commissioner of CST here, of how we partnered with ITU, to say connecting the world from terrestrial networks is going to cost humanity half a trillion dollars. We could connect it from the skies in partnership with ITU. The Digital Cooperation Organization, representing 10% of the global population, 800 million, and I see here Dima Yahya doing a fantastic job leaving no one behind by creating a digital future for all, and Saudi leading by example by jumping from 7% women empowerment to tech to 35%, beating the Silicon Valley EU average and even the G20 average. And can I have a big round of applause for all the amazing women that we have here. You are such a role model to all of us. So let's recap. Within the digital world, we're talking about folks being left behind. But we have to talk about the next chapter, the AI age, how we move from the digital age to the intelligence age. Is it any better? Here, we spoke about a digital divide, a skills divide, a governance divide. What's happening within the AI age? It's projected over the next five years, a billion folks will benefit and harness the benefit of the intelligence age, the AI age. But three new divides we must be able to address today, and they are the compute A divide, the data divide, and the algorithmic divide. And why are they so critical? And the reason why they're so critical, because of a fundamental law that all AI models right now are adhering to called the scaling law, which in very simple terms means the more compute you have, the less noisy in the model. The more data sets and tokens you have, the less noisy the, the model, and the more parameters and intelligence nodes and knobs, the less noisy. Think of it as painting a picture. If you have too many crayons, too many colors, and the ability to draw it perfectly, it will be less noisy. And that's why, in partnership and collaboration with you, in today's IGF, and for the next 20 years, we must agree on a governance model that is able to tackle these three challenges. The compute divide, the data divide, and the algorithmic divide. Because the cost is even so large and there's so much at stake. We're talking about a gap of compute capacity about 63 gigawatts, where only a handful of nations can able, be able to deliver that. We're talking about a 10 million shortage between data scientists, cybersecurity professionals, and AI professionals to close down the divide. And we're talking about 7.5 billion people left behind. And we're no longer talking about the global north or the global south. We're talking about, if we're talking about 8 billion people, 8 out of 10 of you will be left behind. And this is why this is relevant to all of us. And if we did not achieve multilateralism and multi-stakeholder in the past, we must agree on consensus in this IGF. And we need once again to tackle the algorithmic divide, the data divide, and the compute divide. We need an algorithm to make sure that we are helpful, honest, and harmless, to make sure that there is no bias that leaves anyone behind or an AI or a data scientist that is inserting and hardcoding a guardrail to exclude any of us. To, we need to make sure that the data is accessible, accurate, and accountable, and no synthetic data that is being modeled to exclude one group versus the other. And what are we doing about that? We're doing a lot of things in collaboration with you. Sadaya, in partnership with the UNESCO, have launched the Eye Care Center how we have aligned with all of the members of the UN to make sure that AI research and ethics delivers on the honest, harmful, or harmless, and helpful AI models and algorithms for the world. How we make sure that the Digital Cooperation Organization have launched the Generative AI Center of Excellence, making sure that we leave no one behind in the Global South, and we have a very loud voice and for closing down the digital and AI gap in skill sets. We're partnering with the ITU and UNDISA with the equals. When it comes to compute, 
63 gigawatts worth of power, handful of nations. We have a fiduciary duty to make sure that this general purpose technology leaves no one behind. It has to be scalable. It has to be secure and robust, respecting your sovereignty and serving the world. And it has to be sustainable. It cannot add insult to injury to the $6 trillion cost of ineffective action to climate change. And this is why in partnership with you and with the global leaders, the kingdom is leveraging its land, capital, captive market, and energy in partnership with global players like Google, Grok, and Sam Banova to build one of the largest AI training and inference nodes to service humanity. And we have to move from digital public infrastructure to AI public infrastructure. Because if we take the case study for telemedicine, it's good enough that we cut waiting times by delivering the largest virtual hospital. And I want to congratulate the Minister of Health for this achievement under the guidance and support of His Royal Highness Mohammed bin Salman, delivering 50 million virtual consultations, not for the kingdom, for the region. But the next evolution is taking the first full robotics heart transplant to be able to close down the shortage of heart surgeons around the world. And this is why it has to be digital public infrastructure with AI public infrastructure. And is Riyadh the right place to achieve it? History is a great predictor of the future. When the world in 2020 was hit with COVID, this was the capital that drove consensus to $5 trillion stimulus that moved up to $11 trillion to save the global economy. We pledged with the G20 nations $21 billion to, to accelerate vaccines. And we drove for the first time, not agreement, but a commitment to implementation on the OECD principles of trustworthy AI. And if you're talking about the past couple of years, the work that we have done with you and DISA, with the UNESCO, on ethics, with the DCO, with the Gen AI Center of Excellence, and as a proud member of the global community that signed on the pact of the future, the pact for the future for the global digital compact as an input parameter to the WISIS, to IGF. And this is why it gives me great honor and a pleasure to present to you from Saudi Arabia an initiative, an announcement today that we must deliver an AI model and a governance model that is inclusive, that is innovative and impactful to close down the new divides. And with that, I would love to invite His Excellency Lee, His Excellency Sharaf, and Dima to make this historic announcement. Thank you so much.